Welcome boys, last class we, the last time we met was on the lasers, solid state lasers and I think we just gave an idea about the solid state lasers. So we have seen that it's a monochromatic directional, the special property of the lasers and uh, it's, it's a diverging. Okay. What do you mean by this monochromatic? Uh, monochromatic. Suppose if you have a, a light bulb. Okay. Okay. I'm just uh, drawing a light bulb like this. Okay. So we have the filament there inside. So of course it becomes the filament, and then when light is emitted, it uh, emits in all directions. It emits in all directions, not the arrow. Okay, so it can go in this wavelength also and it can go in this wavelength also and it can come out in this wavelength also. But the waves, you know, they are short and they are very long. Here this is a very long wavelength. It goes like this. Here it is very short one. So it goes in all the directions. But if you take the case of a laser, particularly HE and laser, which is the subject of our discussion today, the light emitted will be monochromatic and directional only. So if it goes like this, the next wave will be the same. So it goes like this, single wavelength, right? Single wavelength, single wavelength, single direction and converged. What is it they converged? Uh, it, it's uh, not exactly converged, but it is like uh, in a particular uh, direction only, not diverged. So here divergence means, you know, it goes in this direction, it comes in this direction, wherever you see it is there in the direction. In all the directions it is there. So divergence is uh, not found in the, I mean, divergence is found in the laser source coherent waves you know all the waves of light are in phase with each other and uh, the difference between is uh, if you have a light it is incoherent but uh, you can see that you have you are uh, capable of producing monocoherent uh, uh, monochromatic lights using the prism but that's a different thing because you know there is a single wavelength in all uh, single wavelength light is there but still it will not be in, in a divergent pattern and uh, uh, it will not, it will be in everywhere and there will be only light with some optical magnification only. So let us look into what is the exact position. Now I suggest that you imagine this E1 and E2 as something which is the uh, ground states and exited states. If you just take this as a molecular orders, then well and good, you can understand very well. So I think we are aware of the molecular orders like for example, the sigma orbital and there and the pi orbital is there and different levels are there so of course it is that it may be the same energy any energy level will be the ground level or the exited level and you might have seen the uh, javelinsky diagram in which the exited state goes to a particular level and then comes back it stays over a period of time there <laughs> And uh, here you have seen the different molecular levels and electron stand sitting here, but it's sitting there, it goes up there and it returns and it, when it returns it may be in the same spin or it may revert in a different spin. And in the process it may be emitting some light in our different wavelengths. Now that was the, that was the thing we saw in the Javelinsky diagram. Now here in the spontaneous emission, the spontaneous is the word that we used for the uh, lasers. Now the atom decays from level 2 to level 1. So it's, uh, it's decaying, you know, it is not in the sense it's, it's not a nuclear decay, it uh, loses its energy. It's not in, the, it should not be taken in the nucleus because if an atom decays, it, is, it doesn't emit any alpha or beta or gamma particle to become some other atom. Through the emission of a photon with the energy as you, it is a completely random process, so it says. Now in the simulate emission, emission what you do is you stimulate Stimulate means uh, RD would run. So, okay, it can increase, you just increase and uh, or you just model or you just change whatever you, you want, you know, you can just 
to suit your properties if you just uh, so after uh, atoms in the upper state level energy can be triggered or stored in phase by incoming photon so you use another photon source there that comes on with a specific energy there and the simulated emission uh, simulated photons have unique properties they are in phase phase uh, i think you know this constitutes one phase right this constitutes the crust and trough is there this constitutes one phase and they are all in the same phase you know. suppose if you have is mixed wavelength it will also be in phase with like this so it will have a similar wavelength like this out of phase will be something like this out of phase will be the blue line there okay so the same wavelength as an incident photon and they travel they travel in the same direction as an incident photon so that is the level there okay for this population inversion i am just going to give you the picture import a picture that is uh, very good there so i think uh, just import it here is the energy level diagram that i wanted to show you just uh, uh, look at this just enlarging it here okay so let's look into this you know the green light is is a monochromatic light here this one is a is a monochromatic light single wavelength monochromatic that is why it is a green light there so it is from a different state say for example uh, in uh, you can even take it as uh, eg to d2g eg to d2g level also is there i'm just asking you to imagine the states these are not exactly the t level electrons so this electron goes in case of the chromium 3 plus ions the absorption of light you know it excites the electron to some level to different levels like this and this okay now there is an inversion of the population population inversion is another fact inversion of population what do you call population with the electrons you know population means you know you just have to find the number of electrons in the ground state suppose if you have a d level of orbit electrons in you know if you have five electrons here 1 2 3 4 five and uh, there are no electrons in the excited state what happens is if you pass some light these electrons are getting excited into the different states okay so here let us let me assume that they invert and uh, there are 1 2 3 4 electrons are there so here you have only five electrons and four electrons are there okay all the five electrons go to the uh, out of the five four electrons go to the top level only one electron remains here one electron remains here earlier this was five case and this was zero now it is four and this is one so there is an inversion of population and in in most chemistry books on you know, the molecular levels we call it as a rydberg level where the excited state uh, stay there and uh, they may get inverted depending on the vacancy that is available depending on the energy that is absorbed and that you have to choose and that is what is research is being done about which uh, electrons or atom which electrons or atom can have a different state uh, which is different from the ground state so if you take the case of the electrons you know you know some electrons may go from singlet state to imagine this as going into rather than going from s1 to s0 it is going to s1 to t1 so it acquires high energy there and then it comes back from t1 to s0 like this so this is a this is a process of emission of light there and uh, that is what we say the phosphorescence or fluorescence both of it s1 to s0 is there with the emission of radiation backwards and it's also monochromatic light but here there is no simulation there is no photon absorption there but it's just electrons returning from different states so likewise you have some non radiative transition from the metal stable state metal stable states is is not stable from the pumped levels now this pumping you have to imagine it that uh, you are converting the population so you have to pump all the electrons from the ground state that are there to the top level there so you pump so that is called as the laser pumping with some energy and then when they come back you put some light there and then you get uh, this kind of uh, monochromatic light there the laser is emitted there because of that so this is a time based device and it's, it requires more accurate uh, setup of the instrument so here population inversion is a state which which a substance has been energized excited or a specific energy levels so i told you about the inversion of the population so maybe you can imagine this as a singular state going into the 
triplet state. You can just imagine like this, not exactly, but because it is with the electrons and the laser is with some other uh, photons and other particles. So more atoms and molecules are in higher excited state. So this is a very important point that you are going to write about the lasers. Process of producing publishing inversion is called as the pumping. And very important point. The example by lamps of appropriate intensity and by electrical discharge. By electrical discharge. What is electrical discharge? You can have two electrodes and then you can have the... So that setup is what you are going to see here in the components of the first UV laser which is there in your example. So this is the power supply unit and you have a switch there as well electrical setup there. And here you have a 100% reflective mirror reflective mirror and one side you know uh, you don't have uh, not fully reflective and 95 percent that means it is allowing 5 percent light to pass through is a purposefully done that so it is polished aluminum reflecting cylinder and then you have got 100 percent reflective mirror here records flash tube there light you know which is used for the pumping then you have this ruby crystal okay so if you want to know exactly what uh, the ruby means, you know, uh, it's a it's a kind of a, that is uh, ruby. I think you know it's a pink uh, gemstone. Okay, uh, it's a gemstone which uh, has a formula of about uh, what is it? what may be the constitution. If you uh, know exactly, it is on. It will be Yale 203 and Yale 203 is to CR. So that is the ruby there. So it has a peculiar lattice. You know, I think in the last session we saw how the excited uh, atoms or electrons are not lost to the lattices. So these lattices prove something very uh, a characteristic property required for the laser lamps. And uh, there are not lattice vibrations which mingle with. If there is mingle, there will be some last. That is, you know, if you, you know very well, there is, if there is a matching of the radiations, you know, if the radiations match, uh, radiations match, then you have got something called as the resonance. So when there is resonance, you can transfer the property. If you have the resonance, you can transfer properties. Okay. So this is there with all mechanical things and mechanical things there. The high voltage electricity causes the quartz flash tube to emit an intense burst of light, exiting some of the chromium 3 plus ions in the ruby crystal to a higher energy level. So this is the thing you do in the first state. Then at a specific energy level, some chromium 3 plus emit photons. At the first, photons are emitted in all directions. Photons from one CR3 plus stimulate emission of photons from other CR3 plus. So here you can see that this CR3 and this CR3 are playing a role. That is uh, what you have is some kind of resonance. So here, if you use some other crystals, it will be transferred to some other lattice and the energy will be lost. If the energy lost, <coughs> energy is lost, you won't get any, any, any photon emission and the intensity of light is rapidly amplified. So this increased. Okay. So you just increase here, the, you increase and increase and increase that. Okay. So that is what you call so the amplify, amplify. Measures at each end reflect the protons back and forth <coughs> continuous process of similar emission. So mirrors, you know, uh, there you can see this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So here, this is, I mean, sorry, this, 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 is, this is one mirror, fully reflective mirror. And this is a partially reflective mirror of 92 percent. So I must actually put it like this. So it is reflection like this and reflection like this. Okay. The photons leave through the partially silver mirror at one end. This is the laser light. So why you have 95 percent is after sufficient energy, there will be some energetic uh, photons that leave here. And when they leave here, this will constitute the laser light amplification by simulated emission of radiation. Now it is clear that uh, you have certain setup and which just increases the stimulation and then uh, a coherent monochromatic uh, light is obtained. So this has got two laser system systems and uh, unimaginable absorption and stimulated versus neutralize one another. The material becomes transparent. That is, you know, the laser light uh, is becoming transparent. So it has got uh, some 
property within the simulation that is called as the two layer system you can see this in many movies there are lasers so you can see the three layer laser system initially excited to short lived high energy state then quickly decay into intermediate beta state population inversion is created between the lower ground state and the beta stable state so this picture diagram i already imported excitation in the in the second slide third slide probably i just so this is the first stage you you excite it here say for example if this is s0 and uh, this one is t1 okay it goes to the some triple state and because it is highly excited state there so it comes back emits some light and goes to for example say for example s1 state and then when it comes from s1 state to the uh, s1 state is relatively stable compared to the t1 state so you pump more and more electrons there here so you get a 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 there is called as a population inversion between these two levels and then when they are sufficient you just pass the photons within the chromium produced by the chromium 3 plus ions and then these emit the radiations which we cover and there okay so the next thing about the, this system is the we have got two level three level system here is the thing that i would want you to remember the most important slide in this session is this one very important slide so pump one you use here got the single state or triple state and then comes to second state here population inversion is there this is a three level system and then you use a windy voyage laser i think you have i told you yttrium aluminum garnet this is this one is yttrium aluminum garnet so they have got this special property so new medium medium just like uh, ruby laser this is also a kind of laser yeah and the ruby laser you have al2 o3 with cr cr3 plus here you have a different the place of uh, uh, neodymium you can have cr3 that is the main thing that you do there it has got a wavelength of about 1.6 billion and the a time of about 2.3 to 10 power minus 4 seconds very short tau so you can just this imagine this tau with the tau 2 in the case of hni laser this is still short 100 nanoseconds okay tau 1 is 10 nanoseconds here it is 2.3 to 10 power minus 4 seconds this is very longer this is very shorter so hni laser have got a very good very good property there hni laser has but uh, it's not there in your syllabus i'm just putting some more level so you can get uh, four level to Uh, four level laser system in which laser transition take place between the third and second excited state so what is the first one second one uh, this is the first one this is the second one and this is the third one so there is another state that that is existing so you can classify them in terms of the eigen values or symmetry if you want to consider it in terms of the electrons they are almost the same because you know uh, they are considered as particles whether you consider the photon or whether you consider as electron most of them when they come to the behave be a level of a wavelength you know they behave in the same thing so here is an example of that is given there but you just to concentrate on the previous slide that i have shown for the three state system here it is uh, this one is very important there the examples are there and this one is four level system is your uh, ruby laser right it has got a wavelength of about 0.69 mm and lambda of 0.6928 both are same there so you look at the slide tau 1 is not there tau 1 is tau 3 is greater than lot greater than tau 2 10 power minus 7 10 power minus 3 10 power minus 7 where is 10 power minus 7 where is 10 power minus 3 so you have this pump and from 0 to 3 3 to 1 this two distances are equal it is to be taken care of it. and here you have a pump source you can see that a pump source a gain medium or laser medium and a mirrors okay uh, is is what is required for the solid state lasers there so what are they in the in your case you know, laser constitution is using this you have to draw in the examination uh, very important laser construction uh you have a highly reflective mirror here and you have 95% reflective mirror here because this is 5% allows the laser to escape through then you have flash lamp for photon 
so that is what you call it as a pump and then you have uh, uh, this particular thing this uh, neodymium yttrium aluminum garnet crystal so this have certain lattices which can retain the pumping otherwise you know they can absorb all the photons and not emit at all so that is the materials are so chosen that they just work out to form a laser there so it's a construction in the solid state laser you have got an uh, example of the ruby layer operation wavelength is 694 in the IR region, you have to mention this. Three level system absorbs green and blue. Gain medium is aluminum trioxide. The small part of atoms only replaced by chromium 3 plus ion because it this is responsible for amplifying the amplifying photons. There. Okay. Pump source is a flash lamp there. The ends of the ruby rods are as a laser mirrors. So this is an example. You can find out all the questions. So in, in compared to this. Uh, some just uh, general differences I am giving. Liquid lasers, uh, an example is a dye laser. Gain medium is organic dyes. You know, you got many dyes nowadays which are uh, organic dyes. Uh, replace uh, so many semiconducting materials because semiconducting material happens to be very expensive. Organic dyes you can be prepared in the lab. Uh, some examples like Rodam NG and uh, liquid solution suspension has been pump source is uh, used laser other lasers or flash lamp can be used for wide range of wavelengths is a tuning range it depends on the exact dye used suitable for tunable lasers tunable lasers means where you can change the laser wavelength from blue to light so if you return if you see the movie return of the JDS on the Star Wars the blue wavelength will be used and the red wavelength will also be used for, for fighting I expect the same thing is there with uh, the Blu-ray DVD. I think you know about Blu-ray DVD. This is having a Blu-ray disc uh, is is having short uh, wavelength. Therefore, it's capable of uh, having high energy compared with the uh, red uh, CD. In the compact disc, you have you got only red. Red is having a longer wavelength. So when you want to make H HS in the glass, in the HS in the CD, they take up a lot of space there. But in the case of a Blu-ray DVD, the, if, you, if you can make two holes in the red, in the Blu-ray, you can for the same, you can take up about, uh, for example, eight such holes you can create. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, of course, the distance is this to this. You can see the red is, is having only two and the blue is having about eight. So, uh, because it's having high frequency, there are a lot of wavelengths will be there. That is, a, that is why you have got a Blu-ray disc capacity. While this is holding about 60, 650 MB of data, this can hold about 6 GB of uh, data, where more than 10 times or 8 times that is there. Okay. So another example is this for, 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 for reference is uh, the HENE laser. Operational wavelength is 632.8 meters. Pump source is electrical discharge, gain medium, ratio mixture of helium and neon. So you can see that they reflect the same mirrors there. Some pumping source will be there and then some amplification source will be there and then the reflective mirrors are there. Here they are using the cathode as the source of the, uh, that is the atoms or the electrons for the pumping. Okay. So in the last slide, you know, the HNE laser, some times are given, some wavelengths are given. You can see that uh, this helium and the neon collision is capable of producing uh, so many states there. See here, uh, one s one, it can go to this state, and from this it is coming to this state here. Population inversion can take place. You can pump more and more and more and get deposit there. Here it becomes uh, one means you can have four electrons there in a particular atom, and then they can come back by going into uh, these states, these states, and then coming back to these states. So while coming back, you know you will have to emit a photon and then simulate them. When they return it, uh, these lights, these light waves are simulated by a particular source. They then, once they are simulated, they get uh, amplified and they gain the energy and then they come out like this. Okay, this is the basic thing of the laser. So you have to, can find the notes in the description section. It's very important that uh, you understand the <coughs> basic type of the uh, laser system and that is useful for you uh, and then in the context of the examination. If you have any doubts, you can please revert back to me. Please note that uh, you just cannot write stories of this. You have to use a specific uh, uh, 
chemicals. I mean, that is the uh, aspects that such as uh, helium, neon, and uh, yttrium, <coughs> NAG laser, etc., etc. So that you are more specific in uh, writing what you want to convey. Thank you for joining.